Major changes have been made in the F-16C cockpit. These are designed to improve operational capability and flexibility. Directly in front of me is a new wide-angle heads-up display. It provides the pilot with all the flight information and weapons aiming cues he needs to keep his head out of the cockpit and on his target. The new HUD also has a raster capability for displaying a 25-degree field of view of infrared image. With an appropriate sensor, the pilot can navigate and deliver weapons by using the infrared imagery displayed on the HUD. Directly below the HUD is the integrated control panel. It's placed for easy upfront access to the navigation computer, radios, and the forward-looking infrared system. On both sides of this are two independent multifunction displays. They provide weapon and sensor control and large format displays of air-to-air -air and air-to-surface radar information, various sensor imagery, weapons and stores management data, as well as built-in test data. Prior to flight, all of the mission navigation, communication, and identification data, plus target and weapon information, are loaded onto this cassette. The technical, and all of the mission information is automatically loaded into the onboard systems. Of course, the pilot can modify that information at any time by using the upfront control panel. As in the F-16A, key controls are arranged so that the pilot, while on combat, can operate with his hands on the stick and throttle. For example, if while navigating or attacking a ground target, the pilot sees an airborne threat, he can switch to an air combat mode, automatically obtain a radar lock, destroy that enemy aircraft with an air-to-air -air missile or a gun, and then return to the original mode, all without moving his hands from the stick or throttle. Well, now let's get in the air. It's time to see these systems in operation. Just like the F-16A, the F-16C is easy to start. No external support equipment is required. We only use one switch to turn on the battery and another switch to start the jet fuel starter. Thirty seconds later, the engine is up to idle speed and the pilot begins his pre-flight checks and aligning the inertial navigation set. The entire process, from start to takeoff, can take less than one minute. But today, we'll take it a little bit easier. With the data transfer equipment, the entire mission can be loaded into the aircraft systems in only five seconds. 